Hey, I'm back with another video. <clears throat> and today we're going to be watching It's Eating Animals Wrong, Hunters versus Vegans. Jubilee, I don't watch like... I, I've been watching a handful of their videos, man. It's entertaining, you know. I try to mix it up. I try to watch different things. So let's get the video started because I know y'all niggas... Y'all click... Y'all quick to click off. Oh, eat something too much. And calm down. Dang. Subscribe, though. We're getting to forage. We hope you enjoy this episode. We'll see you next time. If we were all born, like three centuries from now, the world has been globalized and like agriculture can reach every corner of the globe. How would that affect, if at all, your views or your I think easy. Am I gonna be judged if I say not at all? Yeah, we got, we got our hunters, nigga, and we got the biggest on the side. I yeah. became vegan Wait. Oh, because yeah. I could no longer think about eating something that was once living and breathing. The primary thing that keeps me vegan is just always the animal liberation. The idea that we are trying to push our ideas onto others, that stereotype I've experienced the most. Hunting is a very hard concept for people to understand. I am in Texas, it's a lot more acceptable. Even what, people go like that, what? I got it, coach! I got him! <laughs> and though being a woman who hunts, people still, you know, have a really hard time with that concept. I feel like a lot of people think vegans She's pushing are more it. effeminate. People will question your sexuality oftentimes. I grew up in a rural village, living off the land. The way we live is in total respect to the animals, and I think there's so much that people do not know about indigenous culture. Danny, uh, I'm queer, I'm vegan, and I'm multiracial. Hi, my name is Don Marvens. Uh, I've been a vegan for coming on six years now. I'm a freelance photographer, and I recently moved to the LA area. My name is Nina. I'm 24. I've been vegan for coming up on five years now, and I'm a professional astrologer. Oh. <laughs> Hi, my name is Brittany. I'm Koya Kondene from Alaska. I'm a first generation college graduate and I went to school in the California area and I'm currently on a road trip visiting friends to learn whose land I'm on. I am Carly, I'm from Texas. I'm uh, Carly. a mom. I also do sales and marketing consulting. The first prompt is I care about animal well-being. Obviously. Is that surprising to y'all that two hunters <laughs> walked over? I'm, I would love to hear why. Yeah, I would love okay. to hear it. Hunters have the utmost respect for animals. And I think that's a really hard thing for people to see. It's how can you love something um, and respect something that you kill? It's just a hard concept, right? Conservation is a big reason why I hunt. It not only provides food for my family, but I can shoot a certain- She like, she would have smacked fire from her face. No cow. Number of deer each year, and that will keep that population and that herd thriving. I guess I've never really came at this conversation from like a angle of vegans versus hunters. It's always vegans versus meat eater. Mm -hmm. So I understand in a sense the, uh, the respect you have to what you're doing. I just know that I could never do that. Yeah, and I think that for me is one of my maybe more bigger issues is not with vegans, but it's more people who eat meat but don't understand hunting. So you're gonna eat meat that was slaughtered at a factory, <laughs> but I can't just give a deer one swift great bullet in the heart where it dies out where it's supposed to die. I was one of those people that said I could never even be vegetarian. Like I was probably like the people that you're describing just, you know, not having a connection to what they're eating. I didn't think about it. And then <laughs> as Man, y'all doing too much. Nigga, I'm eat. <laughs> no y'all talking about. I did that. You ain't trying to hear all this. Streaming <laughs> services go. I found a little documentary <laughs> through the suggestions. But it and, changed your life. And it changed my life. <laughs> and like I, w I remember, I went to brunch that morning, and I had like sausage and egg and like fried cheese. And then that night, I watched this documentary. And so that's why I'm vegan because I can't support like us as an industry and as a populace like removing the choice from that large of a swath of animal populations just because they're animals. If there was 
a solution, like just a, the magic happens, the skies part, and all the meat is like done in a way that is humane, would that make you more inclined to eat meat? I think that you sort of get into the fundamentals of like, is it humane to kill something? I have to understand and respect and honor that like in indigenous cultures, you know, there's many reasons why people hunt. We would all be remiss if we didn't admit that, you know, at a time in human history, like we needed animal protein and animal meat to survive. But today, it's not necessarily a necessity. I was being taught ethical hunting by an ethical hunter. And again, I think that's a hard, mm. harder concept here. Because um, trust me, like they're asshole hunters. Mm. But that's what I was, I saw conservation and I saw ethical hunting and I saw why we do it. And I saw the food, you know, I haven't bought beef. Mm. I mean, in six, seven years. Can I ask you a question that I'm kind of scared to ask? Um, we'll see. So you said that you're a mother, and if you think of like Bambi, do you ever consider the small baby animals that you're taking their parents away from them? Okay. <clears throat> so Bambi doesn't exist. Right. <laughs> That's a Disney movie. If a mom is there with her yearlings, mm. you would never kill that mom, right? Mm. You wait until she kicks them out of the house. Mm. And that's part of like ethical hunting. That is like, yeah, no one really, like you wait until the babies are kicked out. I learned from my Clinket cousins, they're from the Southeast in Alaska. They're the ones that invented the fish hook. It was so wide that only a full grown halibut could get caught. It's a generational thought. You're not just thinking about, oh, I need food tonight. You're like, how do I make sure I protect their natural processes. When fish hooks are made now, anything can cook out. So many of our pre-colonial traditions were staying in balance with animals. And we had so many practices that prevented overhunting. And the people who are living off the land, who are fighting for the <clears throat> land, are getting last priority. We're not allowed to fish if there's commercial fishing. So we're constantly being watched and fined. It's constantly having <laughs> land taken away. Um, is she crying if you look at any community, it's constantly <clears throat> happening to them where they're told they're not allowed to do this or eat this. It's all connected. It's all a cycle. Veganism is a privileged way of living. Y'all asking some stupid questions. People with ADHD save 10 hours studying with this Chrome extension. But no, by all means. If you have a choice of where you get to get your food and where it comes from, and even knowing about it is a privilege. To have the choice to be vegan that includes, you know, makeup and clothing and all of these things. And, you know, sustainable clothing, for example, is a top dollar yeah. <laughs> um, if you're trying to buy it new and thrifting is great but some people don't even have access to that and so just I think that choice is a privilege and veganism is a choice. I was born in Haiti, uh, the poorest country in the western hemisphere and the fact that my parents were able to leave with me when I was just like one years old into the states like really shaped how my life would go. The lifestyle that I'm living is such a stark contrast from the people down uh, in the Caribbean. I feel like I have to talk about how veganism, especially in the States and especially in like the global West, has been totally co-opted by like, I'm just gonna say it, by whiteness. Veganism shouldn't be a privilege in my opinion, but it is, like the world that we live in now, it is. I don't know enough about being a vegan. I think of it as like something that rich white people do, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know any vegans. I don't know how much money it costs. Yeah, a lot of people also um, from lower income backgrounds or areas, they also rely on fast food yeah. and that stuff is really cheap. I'm sorry, I just can't stop eating Chick-fil-A. I just got, I got, I got it, I got it, I'm sorry. Because, as far as I understand, the uh, government subsidizes. But hey, I mean, I mean the fries. So hey, it's a vegetable. Meat so and hey, products hey, much more than it I'm does paying, you know, vegetables. Hey. When we think about someone who has to work a low wage job to survive, you also have to think they're probably working more than one job. Possibly, mm -hmm. you want the easiest meals. 
you want the highest calorie meals because you're working and you're burning so many calories. So when you're saying, why don't you eat more plant-based? You're asking them to change their shopping habits. You're asking them to spend more time. You're asking them to educate themselves. And when you are working, and I ain't putting myself through that stress. I ain't doing it. <laughs> Being that hard, you you have to numb yourself. You are eating to survive. I ain't doing that is it. Different than choosing what you're eating. Totally. And it's not fair to like ask any of those people in survival mode to completely like shift their way of life and mm-hmm. and learn a whole new lifestyle. And I definitely agree with that. I'm just curious, like, if we were all born like three centuries from now. The world has been globalized and like agriculture can reach every corner of the globe. How would that affect, if at all, your views or your choices? Am I going to be judged if I say not at all? (laughs) I'm genuinely curious. Yeah, I don't, I mean, like I'm going to eat meat. I don't want to say there's no reason to not eat meat, but there's maybe no reason for me not to eat meat. I get get it. I'm feeling judged. I'm not judged, but I I don't understand. I'll be honest, I don't understand. I mean, Well, it's like this. You see, when I get Chick-fil-A, and then I have a spicy chicken sandwich. And then I have my f- fries. Let me leave the fries out, you know? But I have my spicy chicken sandwich, right? You know what I mean? And then I got my sauce. And then when I dip the uh, spicy chicken sandwich in the sauce, and then I... Um, 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 and then when I do that, it almost makes me say, Wow! This is better than a salad! So, you know, that's... <laughs> hey, man, I started the video. Start like, I still cry when I kill something. I mean, mm. I love the animals, but they're still just animals. Like, oh, okay. snout, chill out. You would go down. Everyone, mm, girl, what you say? Forever. That's true. You know, and it's been there's a never been a culture ever that was 100% vegan. You know, they have shifted. They're plant based mm. and Mediterranean and Buddhist. And they I don't know. Do vegans, like, because I'm just curious, because, like, you can't change the fact. That chicken and uh like beef and that stuff tastes great. So I wonder if they ever just say, man. <laughs> hey man, want to go to Waterbury real quick? <laughs> we have moved towards <laughs> culture who was Gee, man. Calm down, sis. Has ever existed. Dang. It sounds like it's a natural order kind of thing. Yeah. That's interesting to hear because I'm firmly of the belief that like we are animals. Mm-hmm. So for me, the natural order. You know what's crazy though? He said, okay, look, look, look. Hold on, y'all. Tell me, am I right or wrong, Gary? He said, well, animals, right? So let, let's just let's just go by what he just said. If that is the case, tell me one lion that's gonna say, well, I'm gonna be a vegan today. I'm not gonna eat you. Okay, guys, you know? I don't believe in eating humans. Nigga, no! That that lion is gonna go chop chop, ha ha ha. Come on, man perspective doesn't hold a lot of water do you guys have pets like a dog and and don't compare no dog to no cow don't do that don't do that no other parts of the world i see a dog consider your pet some people would eat but that's there i mean that's there that's hey that's them that's them you know it is some things in this world that's like nah i'm not eating that like i wouldn't eat no turtle that's disgusting. I won't eat no snake. That's disgusting. Oh, no bugs. Oh, that's off. No, that's disgusting. I won't eat no cat. That's nasty. I won't eat no dog. That's nasty. I won't eat no horse. That's nasty. I won't eat no camel. That's nasty. I won't eat no elephant. That's nasty. But a chicken? Yes. Yes. A turkey? Yes. Yes. A cow? Yes. Yes. What else? A shrimp? Yeah, yeah. A fish? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, but I'm chomping. I don't eat dog, and I hope nobody don't eat my dog. (laughs) That's you know, I mean, I can't worry about. That's disgusting. I don't know how you get a dog. That's just nasty, bro. That the way dogs look is just nasty, you know. And and I guess because like we see them as pets, and we see them straight animals. And when I see an animal that's not it's, it's like, I don't, like, when hunters, they'll kill something, right, and they'll cook it. You feel what I'm saying? To me, that's like, I just be too scared about parasites. You know, when they farm, you don't got to really, you, most of the time, you don't have to worry about that if they're farming right. But with animals that are just stray, and, you know, you just kill them off top, it's just like the parasites. You know what I mean? That's why you shouldn't eat raw fish. 
you don't eat raw fish. You shouldn't eat raw meat in general. Wanna know why? Because parasites live in raw food. I mean, they live in them anyway. But if you cook it, it's a chance that parasite might die. That's why I only eat farm animals because it's a higher chance that it's no parasites. But if you eat an animal just straight raw and like like sushi, bro, no, bro. It's a like they say it's a high it's a high chance that you don't eat a parasite if you eating sushi. Yeah, you don't believe it? Go look it up. There's a video on it. Someone in China eating dogs. Like yeah. I, you know, we can all try and make the world a better place. And it's interesting though, because it does kind of challenge the natural like, order perspective. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. if, where do you draw the line? It, right. Yeah. Something to think about in this conversation too is knowing that uh, even when we eat plants, there's so many people that we're exploiting. Yes. The core of this, I think, is just having that respect for your food. I fully agree with that. I think it's such a falsehood when vegans say cruelty-free, mm -hmm. the avocados that I eat, you know, were harvested by people that are being exploited, so. Do you guys consider hunting a privilege? Is it everything a privilege? To a, a point, right? A lot of people are going literally in their backyard, shooting something, processing it in their house, and putting it right on the table for their family. Like, mm. that to me is beautiful. Hunting can be really expensive. You basically have to have a huge ranch or you have to spend a ton, a ton of money to hunt on someone else's ranch. And then I think what a lot of people see are, right, the trophy hunters and the going over to Africa and hunting. I have not done that yet. But that does not mean to. that I am not for it or against it. I do know that tourism in Africa is a huge money maker for mm -hmm. them. I mean, those villages are really poor and having an entire animal and multiple animals that hunters give them is a, it's big for them. My question with that would just be, why would it have to be a tourist? It kind of just sounds like the white savior complex narrative because we are willing to pay a load of money. <laughs> I remember reading a statistic about like, a single elephant in its lifetime can garner over a million dollars just from photographic tourism. One single elephant's ivory is about $21,000. So just that in itself, like to me, is evidence that like non-violent tourism, like non-trophy mm -hmm. hunting tourism, like is just as lucrative, if not more she lucrative. She moved too much to be a sniper. <laughs> Do you really? know the number one female <laughs> tournament of all time? Like, she moved no, too much. No, it's not confidence. It's not charm, game, or making... You need steady aim. She move a lot. Hmm. Oh, wait, I agree with this. <laughs> Come on, Brett. I had to read the If this was asked first, I would have disagreed, but after hearing your story, it is necessary to an extent. Mm -hmm. If you're hunting for food, then you're saying that your life is more important than that other animal's life, and- It's an animal, dude. <laughs> it's an animal, dude, okay? I know some people that are like, my cat, it matters. It's an animal, dude. I'm gonna save a human life before I save an animal life. That's facts. Like, it's, it's an animal, bro. I mean, I'm not crazy. Like, I don't hate animals. I'm just saying, but it's an animal, bro. Like, that is more reasonable. Like, you value animals' lives at the same level as humans. Like, no. To me, than saying that <laughs> your pleasure or your trophy or whatever is more important than an animal's life. There's also safety, which I now realize. Mm -hmm. And it's like almost two hours if you needed a medical emergency evacuation. So, yeah, I don't know any killing besides safety and like food and then we still try to make the most out of the body and the fur and we'll try to like feed it to the dog team so there is just the biology of land and there is biology of carrying capacity and there's biology of how these animals have to be you know taken care of <clears throat> i know that if people are not hunting those deer are going to starve there's not enough food mm. there's not enough water there's not enough shelter so to me, I will take one for the team and I will shoot a few deer this year to keep the land in check and the ecosystem in check.
She said she's going to bless the block. Um, maintaining equilibrium. Well, bless the woods. Important. My question to that would be like, bliss what's sweet. actually sitting at the root the cause of the deer overpopulation? Is the root cause that people aren't hunting enough? Or is the root cause that their, you know, their land is being taken away? But me making assumptions, hunting is a band-aid solution. Like, I wish I could answer a very smart a and like, well, based on data. That's yeah. <laughs> done. I mean, look at Los Angeles and Dallas. and like, where are our animals going? Right. They're dying. You know, I mean, but what is the solution? I don't know. The U.S. a lot of the times has tried to decide what animals need to go or not without the guidance of indigenous people who have been doing this for thousands of years and who have relationships with the animals. There are solutions. There are people that know it. And we need to push people in power to uplift voices who have this knowledge. He, why didn't go up there? Hey, girl. Hey. <laughs> the question is healthier than what? Mm -hmm. I chose to come up here because my diet is healthier than when I was not eating a vegan diet. I love a Beyond Burger. Is that healthier <laughs> than eating rice, beans, and collard greens every day? No, it's not. Do I believe that eating plant-based is healthier than eating animal products? Yes. And if you're super, super intentional and informed about what you're putting in your body, then it's gonna be healthier than someone who's not. That's also healthier on an emotional and mental level. There's this detachment, this emotional detachment mm. that you're going through when you're eating an animal, and, and that to me is emotionally unhealthy. Mm -hmm. I think awareness is one of the healthiest things that we can have. I know if you like search veganism like online, especially on YouTube, you can see very dangerous vegan diets being uh, like just told to a, like a massive audience of like young impressionable people. Like, but like Oreos are vegan, Twizzlers are vegan, <laughs> and it's been 1 a.m. and I'm down to sleep of Oreos. I'm just like, why did I do that? But just wait vegan. until you're 30. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm 24, so I feel mm -hmm. like oh I'll just keep on kicking, I don't know. Coming here, I want to be very careful in extremes like my meat is you know my diet is healthier i don't know that i don't know you i don't know you i don't know you i believe the meat i eat is better than what you would get at mcdonald's i just think it would be so hard to be a vegan <laughs> like it seems like so much work there's a learning curve it's not hard in the grand scheme of things i feel a lot better um putting in the work because I feel more empowered, I guess you could say. The definition of veganism is just as far as what is practicable and possible. It's all about doing your best. Hey, thank you. Hey man, make sure y'all like subscribe. That one was sad. You know what I mean? It's like, man, they didn't have no good questions. It's like, you know what I mean? So, you know, that one was, I was like, I already started it. Man, make sure y'all like subscribe. I'll see you in the next video, man. Y'all stay tuned for some more videos, man. I am out.